Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode at The Independent Dollar. This channel focuses on personal finance videos in a way that is straightforward, unbiased, and easy to understand. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of the Lifelong Learning Plan, a government program that allows you to withdraw money from your RSP on a tax-free basis to help fund the cost of post-secondary education. Here are the points that we'll be covering today. Who can use a Lifelong Learning Plan? How much can you withdraw? When and how do you repay it? What happens if you don't make those repayments? What if you become a non-resident under the plan after you've made a withdrawal? And what happens if you decide either not to go to school or you don't finish your program? What is the Lifelong Learning Plan and who can use it? The Lifelong Learning Plan is a government program that allows you to withdraw money from your RSP, either for yourself or your spouse, to help fund the cost of post-secondary education. In order to qualify under this program, as a student, you must meet these conditions. You must be enrolled or received an offer to enroll in a full-time program at a designated educational institution, like a college or a university, for example, and it must be in a qualifying educational program. If you're not sure whether or not your program or school qualifies, then I'll include a link in the description to the CRA criteria, but generally, for a program to qualify, it must be at least three months and be at least 10 hours or more in length each week. You must also be a resident of Canada, and we'll discuss a little later on in this video what happens if you become a non-resident after you've already withdrawn money under this program. And finally, if you withdrew from the LLP in a previous year, your repayment period must not have started yet, or you must have already repaid the balance in full in order to participate again. But what if you withdrew money from your RSP under the first time homebuyers plan? Can you still participate? Yes, a withdrawal under this program has no impact in your ability to participate in this program. However, when you start making repayments, you cannot designate one payment to both programs. And we'll talk about this a little later when we dive into repayment options. Now let's take a closer look at withdrawing under this program. Either you or your spouse have now decided to pursue a post-secondary education. But how much can you withdraw under this program? Under this program, you can take out $10,000 per year up to a maximum of $20,000 under this plan. However, you want to be extra cautious if you've been making regular or recent deposits into your RSP account. In order to participate in this program and also deduct those same contributions on your tax return, any amount withdrawn must have already been in your RSP account for 90 days or more. To withdraw funds under this program, you will need to complete Form RC96, which looks just like this, and I'll include a link to it in the description below. While you don't need to submit this form with your taxes, you do need to make sure that you keep a copy on file should CRA request it. Now that we know that the maximum is $20,000, you don't need to withdraw the full amount in the first year. You can continue to make withdrawals under the program until you reach that maximum up until January of the fourth calendar year after the year you made your first withdrawal, as long as you still meet the conditions and your repayments have not yet started. Now, I know that's a bit of a mouthful, so as an example, assuming you made your first withdrawal from the plan in 2020, the latest you can make a withdrawal under the program afterwards would be January of 2024. You've taken advantage of the lifelong learning plan, but when and how do you eventually have to repay it? Let's continue with the same example. You withdrew under the program in 2020. Assuming you were still considered a qualifying student for at least three months during the year in 2020 and onwards, you will not need to start repayment. However, if you don't meet that condition two years in a row, your repayment period will now begin. The latest year that you can start repaying your LLP withdrawals is the fifth year after your first withdrawal, regardless of whether or not you completed your program. So in this case, assuming you remained a qualifying student and your first withdrawal was in 2020, you will now be required to start repayment in 2025, even if you're not finished your program. Once you enter the repayment period, you will have 10 years to repay the amount that you withdrew, and the amount of each payment will be equal to one-tenth of the original withdrawal. Therefore, if you took out $10,000 in 2020, then your repayment amount would be $1,000 each year for 10 years. So in this example, in order to make your repayments, you need to deposit $1,000 into your RSP each year for 10 years and designate that payment as a repayment to the LLP program. And you'll do that by completing Schedule 7 on your tax return. And this is really important to understand because your bank cannot make the designation for you. In order to do it, it must be done when you file your taxes. 
Be careful though, not all deposits into an RSP can be designated as a repayment to the LLP program. Here are a few of the most common ones that you need to be aware of. Deposits made to a PRPP by your employer. Deposits made into a spousal RSP. This is probably the biggest misconception. You cannot repay your LLP by making a deposit into a spousal RSP. Transfers from other RSP plans. And finally, deposits that you have already designated as repayments to the first time homebuyers plan. What will happen if you decide not to repay your lifelong learning plan withdrawals? If you don't make your repayments each year, that will result in the amount being added to your taxable income. So if we think back to our previous example with the $1,000 annual required payment, let's assume you made $40,000 a year. Well, you're now going to have to pay income tax on $41,000. What happens if you withdrew money under the lifelong learning plan, but you're now considered a non-resident? If you become a non-resident, you can no longer participate in the program. Therefore, once that happens, you will have to repay the entire balance that you withdrew back into your RSP. Otherwise, whatever amount you don't repay will be added to your taxable income that year. What happens if you withdraw money under the lifelong learning plan, but you don't end up going to school or you don't finish the program? Well, in order to benefit from that 10-year repayment schedule we talked about, you either need to have completed the program or still be enrolled in the program the following year by at least March. So if we think back to our previous example where we took money out in 2020, in order to be allowed to repay the loan over 10 years, you would still need to be enrolled up to and including the month of March 2021. Now, one exception would be if you left the program prior to that deadline, but less than 75% of your tuition was refundable. In that case, you're still allowed to repay the withdrawal back over the 10-year period. However, if the school is willing to refund 75% or more of your tuition, or you don't end up attending the program, then you will need to repay the full amount back into your RSP. And you'll do that in the form of a canceled payment, which simply means that you don't receive a deduction for it, nor will it impact your contribution room. Otherwise, the full amount will be added to your taxable income that year. This wraps up our video on the lifelong learning plan. As always, comment below with any questions that you might have. And be sure to stay tuned for our next video where we will be breaking down the basics of ETFs and comparing the contents and performance of some of the more popular options. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you back here on Thursday.